Warning, due to the nature of this series, this video will contain spoilers. You have been warned. At the end of everything, hold on to anything. Life sure can be strange sometimes. First thing you know, you're returning home after dropping out of college. Then you're slowly but surely coming to the realization that you and your friends are stuck in a dead-end town with little hope of progressing in life. And as if things couldn't get any worse, you witness a kidnapping, go on a ghost hunt, confront Eldrick beings, and involuntarily commit murder. Sound crazy? Well, all of this and more make up the plot of the highly acclaimed indie title, Night in the Woods. This was a game that I hadn't even heard of despite its highly successful Kickstarter campaign. But as I played, I immediately fell in love with its unique art style, catchy music, down-to-earth writing, and wonderful story. So, as the leaves are falling and the seasons are changing, let's take a trip to Possum Springs and find out just why Night in the Woods is one of the best games I've ever played. The visuals in this game are reminiscent of a children's book. With its flat and colorful renditions of the characters and environments, it's very easy to become drawn in. On top of that, every single character has their own unique design, ranging from the main characters, to the supporting cast, and even the townspeople that you'll see walking around. And while it's subtle, these characters all show a fairly wide range of emotion, despite their simple designs. But what I probably found the most impressive was how well utilized the environments are. Possum Spring consists of seven total screens, which makes sense considering it's a small and mostly abandoned town. However, whether you're leaping across power lines in May's neighborhood, visiting Pastor Kay at the church, or yelling at statues, each area is greatly diverse and truly helps create the foundation of a true living and breathing world. From the hills of Possum Jump to the abandoned food donkey, or even just home sweet home, these visuals create a vivid, colorful, and extremely engaging experience. So, when it comes to gameplay, this game is interestingly put together. It's not that you have no control over the character. On the contrary, most of this game will have you exploring Possum Springs and watching it change from day to day as you interact with the townsfolk. Plus, there is quite a bit of platforming required to complete most of the side quests, and while hanging out with your friends, there are quite a few mini-games thrown in, such as rhythm games and finding constellations. However, most of this game consists of May having conversations with people and choosing which dialogue path to explore. While I have no problem with this as I find the writing to be incredible, it is something to keep in mind for someone who hasn't played before. However, I found this element of the game to be just as rewarding. It is a blast to watch May's train of thought as she tries to awkwardly stumble through conversations and can be equally heartbreaking as she tries to talk her way through an unintentional fight with one of her friends. This game can create an engaging experience, whether having a heart-to-heart -heart with parents or having your heart stop from electrocution. But no matter the scene, I knew I was sure to be hooked from start to finish. The full OST to this game is over three hours long. There are unique tracks depending on the day, building, friend, nightmare, and of course, minigame. In fact, these tunes are so catchy that there have even been multiple vocal covers online of the songs that your band plays. Each track is wonderfully put together and greatly validates the setting of each location or event. As a matter of fact, during the Nightmare segments, you will have to find each of four musicians to progress. As you find each one, their respective instrument begins playing. As you begin finding them, you will then realize that they all harmonize to create the theme for that particular Nightmare. This cleverness that extends all the way to the OST is just one of the many reasons that I find this game to be one incredible experience.
so I first stumbled upon this game when watching a Let's Play on YouTube. The players were only about halfway finished, so I decided to pick this game up and play it for myself. This way, I could experience the ending firsthand. Let's just say that this was a wise choice. The game begins with May, a college dropout, arriving home in Possum Springs. As she returns and reunites with her friends, she finds that despite the town mostly saying the same, they have really changed. Her friend B is working to maintain her father's hardware store after her mother died, which forced her to become an adult earlier than expected, and also forced her to abandon her dreams of going to college. Her former partner in crime, Greg, while still a free spirit and goofball, is working full time at minimum wage so he and his boyfriend Angus can move away. Greg's newfound antics once May returns makes him clash with his boyfriend, who is trying just as hard to make their life come together and also leave Possum Springs. All of this becomes overwhelming for May, who greatly depends on the familiarity of home to stabilize her due to her own personal issues. All of this makes for a fascinating and wonderful slice of life tale. And then a ghost kidnaps someone on Halloween and you spend the rest of the game trying to find said ghost. Did you get whiplash just then? Because so did I. In fact, the best way that I can describe this game is a coming of age tale with a cosmic horror story going on in the background. While the overall theme of the game doesn't really change towards the end, the tone greatly shifts. However, this doesn't necessarily come out of nowhere. In fact, the nightmares, back and forths between characters, and even the opening text all indicate that there is something much larger going on. And once you do find out what has been happening, you'll discover a conservative blood cult and confront an eldritch being. Or do you? Now, I would have been fine with just this plot, but the game goes far above and beyond. If you engage with the various town people, you'll find that each one of them has their own fleshed out stories. The girl on the porch down the street is a divorcee who turns to poetry and therapy in an attempt to better herself. Mr. Chazikov on the roof becomes a wonderful and encouraging figure in May's life as they explore the stars and discuss history. Even the local pastor has a fascinating story as she attempts to help a local homeless man while fighting City Hall and even admits to May that she often has crises of faith. Near the end of the game, May admits that she has become detached from reality after realizing that the characters from a video game that she loved weren't actually people, but just lines of code. This game, however, goes out of its way to create people that are fully three-dimensional, sympathetic, and most importantly, relatable. This characterization, along with a fascinating and surprisingly elaborate plot, creates one of the best video game stories that I've played in a long time. Let's face it, no video game is perfect. Night in the Woods is no exception. So, in the interest of fairness, I'll address some of the criticisms that I've heard regarding this game. Number 1. This game is more of a visual novel. Now, I've already addressed this to an extent, but I have heard this complaint here and there. Yes, in all fairness, a large portion of this game is just having conversations, and honestly, it could work as a visual novel. However, with the amount of minigames thrown in, the large amount of exploration, and the sheer interaction with the environments, I would say that this is in fact a fully-fledged video game. Yes, it is worth noting that this game is very plot-heavy, but as I'm sure you've guessed, plot-heavy games have never bothered me before. Number 2. The Horror Comes Out of Nowhere well, yes and no. Yes, a ghost hunt and interaction with great old ones is a bit odd when the rest of the game consists of maintaining relationships and dealing with the hardships of growing up in a dying town. But as I've said before, there are signs here and there. It's just that the signs aren't apparent until the second playthrough. 
so if one wasn't interested in the game the first time around, I wouldn't expect them to play again. However, near the end of the game, you will be told why Mei has been having nightmares, what the nightmares represent, and even who is in the nightmares. Alternatively, it could just be her overactive imagination along with emotional and mental issues. And finally, number three. Why are the characters all animals? Um, I have no idea. Not that I have a problem with this, but I did find it interesting that the characters are all animals, while the game deals with very human issues. In fact, these animals have pets as well, and I even saw a cat talking to a cat while a cat walked by. Well, I did look into this, and one of the creators did address this. However, their explanation was simply, that's just how it is in this universe. Really? It, it wasn't done as a joke or even ironically? That's just how it is in the setting? Oh. Well, um, glad I cleared that up. At least I know now. I liked my way better. Life sure can be strange sometimes. While reuniting with your best available friends, struggling with the reality of life passing you by during a seriously weird autumn, and even encountering great old ones at the end of everything, wishing to at least die anywhere else isn't too much to ask. Night in the Woods is a game that shows the struggles of growing up, maturity, and just life in general. It can be hard to hold on to those things that make you who you are, and even harder to let go of the fears and anxieties that hold you back. But while it may seem futile and holding on to hope is extremely painful, at least it will have meant something. And at the end of everything, hold on to anything. That is why Night in the Woods is one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs>